Hi, hi, everybody. Sandy here. It's Fridays with Sandy. We've got a great guest. His name is Raj. He uh, he's worked for both GM and Ford, so we got a lot to talk about. He wants a mock interview, and Raj, say hi, and uh, just tell us. This is very often the first question in a mock interview. Could you tell us what you're doing now? Absolutely. Hello, everyone. Uh, hi, Sandy. Thanks for having me here. Really excited about this opportunity. Uh, so right now, I work as a design integration engineer at uh, General Motors. Uh, what that means is I am responsible for delivering uh, manufacturable, easily assemblable, and uh, regulations compliant uh, part interfaces. Uh, so sure. what I That's do a mouthful. What are, what are, doesn't that mean, you know, just legal parts? <laughs> Right, uh, that are also manufacturable. So what that means is I, uh, you know, um, I am responsible for transforming the artistic designs from clay sculptors and digital modelers into parts that can be manufactured in, uh, you know, in, in the manufacturing facilities. Yeah, so uh, that's an interesting job. So you've got some dr dreamers and artists there at General Motors and they They'll come up with a part and you'll go, this is very beautiful, but it won't work and it's impossible exactly. to make and it would cost too much. Exactly. Exactly. So, so uh, you're Mr. No. <laughs> what's that? You're, you're Dr. No. <laughs> okay. Uh, but we'll get back to that. Uh, for our folks in the peanut gallery, one of the first questions they ask in an interview at Harvard is, uh, <laughs> Hello there, how are you? How, how would you introduce yourself to your classmates? This is important. If you, if you, everyone should be able to do this. Um, one minute go. Uh, one minute yes. try that. Uh, hello everyone, excited to be here. Uh, so my name is Anirudh Raj. I am from India. Uh, I went to college in the city of Bangalore in, so in the southern part of India. Got my bachelor's in mechanical engineering. And uh, after college, uh, I worked at General Motors India for a year. And during that time, I realized I wanted to learn more about how passenger vehicles are engineered. So I, so I moved to the US to pursue graduate education in automotive engineering. And after grad school, uh, I worked with a Ford's subsidiary company for three years as a product designer. And I'm currently working as a design integration engineer with uh, GM in, here in uh, Warren, Michigan. And apart from work, uh, I uh, I am very fond of cooking and biking, and I'm also okay. A that's it. You know, they're going around the room, so they got a lot of people to go to. That was a little. That was pretty good. You're good at this. I think you're going to be a good interview, e if that's what they call them. My advice to that would be to make it. Your classmates want to know what you're doing now. Uh, they don't care about where you went to grade school and stuff like that. Uh, uh, so okay. yeah, I, a good way to answer this question about introducing yourself to your classmates, is keep it short, say, hi, you know, my name is blah, blah. I come from India. Right now I'm working at, before entering business school, my last job was doing this. Right. That's okay. what they're interested in. And then you make the other stuff shorter. You get it? Got it. Okay. Thanks. Here's a, here's a question they ask. What, uh, what, what do you want your classmates to know about India? About India? Um, yeah. So I, I think they already know about India's population. Uh, but uh, I, I would want my classmates to know that India is very culturally diverse. Um, we, we speak about, uh, there's about 28 official languages spoken in the country. And uh, each, sta each state has, at least in the southern part of India, has a... Um, totally different language from the other. Um, and apart from that, uh, you, you might or might not know this. India is India considers cr the sport cricket as a religion. Uh, so it's, it's uh, the, yeah, the market. Blah, blah, blah. They, 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 they might want it. They, they want to know about India, like how to invest there. What's, what's the investment environment like? They want to know some, you know, the fact that India is very diverse. It's, it's actually broken into states. There are 38 states. They eat, many of them have different, whatever the truth is, many of them have different languages and the current Indian government, uh, India is very politically, there's a lot of turmoil, the government changes. Uh, mm -hmm. The current government is being run by Mr. Whatever his name is. 
And if you're interested in doing business in India, what you need is a local partner or you don't need a local partner. Okay. Right. So right. with that, with those cues in mind, see if you can do it. What do you, what do you want your classmates to know about India? Uh, so uh, I, I want, uh, well, first, first things first, uh, India is very culturally diverse. Uh, uh, you know, there are about 28 official languages spoken in India. And uh, secondly, uh, the, you know, the country of India, we, um, uh, the uh, the the economy opened up to foreign investment in early 1990s and uh, in 2000s india uh, you know uh, came to know or uh, developed a workforce very uh, that that was very competent in providing uh, information technology services uh, so bangalore the city i come from is known as the it capital of india because uh, the city employs uh, at least a million software engineers who are wow. working for indigenous as well as American software companies. What, 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 what's the form of government and how, how, how open are they? If I wanted to start a company in India, do I need a local partner? Uh, I am not sure about uh, the whether you need a local partner, but uh, India is a democratic country. It's currently uh, the current prime minister of India is Mr. Narendra Modi. He got elected in uh, 2014 and he's in his second term right now. Yeah. He belongs to the he belongs to the Bharatiya Janata Party, which is the conservative party in India. Okay, you you understand how a good answer would sound. You, what you gave was the uh, uh, not quite ready for prime time answer, but you yeah. were you were using the right facts. You were addressing the correct issues. Okay. Yep. Everybody, everybody listening to this broadcast, you have to be ready to say, what do you want your classmates to know about where you come from? It could be a country, or even if you're from the US, they might say, boy, yeah, you know, you come from, uh, you know, Washington State, that's got quite an odd reputation as being sort of in Canada. What do you want your classmates to know about Washington State? You should be prepared for that, okay? Okay, another, so one topic that you have to command is where you come from, what do you want your classmates to know about that? Another topic is education. It's a very frequent question. I noticed you went to RV College of Engineering. Could you tell me what that is and what your experience was like? Oh, absolutely. Uh, so RV College of Engineering is a uh, private engineering school in my state, in my home state of Karnataka in India. Uh, yeah, so you know, we, we know a lot about the Indian IITs. So this may come up. So how, how does, how does uh, RV College of Engineering, how does that compare or with the IITs? Uh, so if you were to look at the rankings for engineering schools in India, um, IITs would typ typically take your top 10 and top 20 slots. Uh, RV College, I think, comes in uh, from 20 to 30s. Uh, but when I enrolled in, the, in, in RV in 2012, it was, uh, I think, recognized or ranked in the top 20. Yeah, uh, so they, they, there's a question they ask. It's slightly embarrassing. It, well, the question they ask is, how come you went there? Okay. Let right. me suggest okay. an answer, right? I was interested in engineering and I couldn't get into an IIT. <laughs> that, I take it that is the answer, right? Uh, that, that is pretty much the answer, yes. Yeah, you say, well, I'll be honest with you. I was interested in engineering. I couldn't get into an IIT. And then my choices were this place and that place and that place. And I chose RV College because Yep. So let's hear uh, your answer to that. All right. Uh, so I'll, I'll, I'll be honest. Uh, so my first choice was IATs. I couldn't get into an IAT. And uh, my... Uh, How you come? Know, uh, well, I, I, I did not perform as, as well as I wanted to in the IAT uh, uh, entrance exams. However, yeah. I performed... Yeah, if you're telling me, IIT, is that just exam-based or mostly exam-based? It is mostly, it is, it, at, at the time I enrolled in colleges, it was predominantly uh, exams. Yeah, except for maybe some uh, diversity Degrees. programs. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Uh, so that's, apart from that's IATs. Also, that's, those are important words. 
diversity programs. You don't want to name people. You don't want to say, yeah, it's, it's, it's mostly for grades, except they admit a lot of uh, poor kids or they admit a lot of kids from Pakistan. You go, except that there's a diversity program. Okay, that's okay. the way you say it. So okay. you, don't, you don't wind up maligning any other cultural group. It's real important. Absolutely, yep. Uh, what, what was it like? Uh, here, here's one of their favorite questions. What, what was unexpected when you got there? Right. Uh, so given that RV was one of the top uh, engineering schools in my state, I knew that it would be competitive and that I would be surrounded with like smart people. But uh, when I got in, um, I was pleasantly surprised that, you know, there were like very smart people and uh, I was not used to. Uh, yeah, you're not answering the question. The question was, what was unexpected when you got there? You're just you're just telling us what your experience was. Gotcha. Uh, so, uh, shall I go? Uh, on? A typical answer is um, there were a lot more women than I expected, or a lot fewer. But it, I, I don't know if that's true, but that's a very good answer uh, if it is true. Another example is uh, there were a lot of kids there who were either wealthy or poor. Okay, that's a good answer. Uh, or there were a lot of people there who were who knew what they were, who had careers in mind or a lot of people were older. Okay, did you have an answer along those lines about what was unexpected? Uh, sure, uh, shall I go again? <clears throat> yeah. Um, so what was unexpected was there were uh, a lot of kids from other states in India. Um, so uh, like- Why was, was that, what were they doing there? Do you have to belong to the state or how come? What were they doing there? Uh, so, I mean, uh, I, I guess they came to RV because it was uh, like, as you know, among the top 20 colleges in India. But I expected uh, going in, I expected it to be f full of folks from my home state, uh, which was not the case. And, okay, uh, that's a fair answer. You know, I thought everybody there would be uh, people from my home state, which is very right. populous and the school is very good at, right. as an RV. Uh, okay, good. What... Um, <clears throat> Let's finish out the college experience questions. What what what, what was your favorite class and why? Uh, it, my favorite class has to be uh, heat transfer. It was taught by a professor who was a retired scientist from Indian Space Research Research Organization, and uh, he made very um, obscure concepts uh, such as like the working of refrigerators and air conditioners, very. Uh, you know, uh, alive and uh, like. Yeah, the professor was really good. It, the subject matter was, you know, uh, important, but the professor brought it alive. He had a career working for the Indian heat, heat company and he, he could give a lot of examples. That, that's the answer. Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, this is also a critical question. If you had your college career to do over, what, what would you do differently? I think I would manage my time better and take part in um, more diverse extracurricular uh, opportunities, such as uh, the debate club at my college or the entrepreneurship cell at my college. I did do, I did uh, partake in, um, you know, building a all-terrain race car student project, but I would diversify further and uh, pursue these opportunities as well. It's kind of a blah, blah answer. Uh, I... Good answers are, if, if this is a great answer is I would have taken a year abroad, okay? If that was not possible for you, another good answer is, you know, I, I wish I had taken more uh, computer classes. That's also a great answer for liberal arts people. Or I wish I had learned how to code, okay? Okay. For our viewers, those are great answers for, you know, what would you have done differently? Uh, in your case, uh, what you could say is, you know, you know, I I, I was sort of dabbling in this uh, race car club, and right. you know, we had a chance to turn that club into something really powerful. And I wish I had put all my extracurricular effort into building out that club. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I don't know if that's true, but you get it. That's a good answer. Right. Yep. Okay. Makes sense. Good. Uh, and then this is critical. So you graduated, 
in 2016, and then you went to the University of Michigan for a master's of science in automotive systems engineering. Why did you do that? And how did that come about? Right. Uh, so in college, I uh, worked on the race car student project, and uh, that sort of sparked my passion for automotive engineering. And that's that's why I joined GM India after college, my first job. And while at GM, uh, I, I, uh, I uh, quickly burned through learning opportunities uh, there. And I, and, and I felt that my engineering... You're, you're, you're all over the place. You go, after college, I joined GM. When I was at GM, I got very excited about engineering, automotive engineering. They had a program where they would send you to Michigan. I, I don't know if this is true or not, but that's a good answer. You're just you're just going around in circles and not making an argument. Huh. Okay. Uh, I, 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 I don't want to convince you. I mean, I do want to convince you. Do, do you <laughs> believe me or do you? I do. do you, good. This is critical. Yeah. Right. Okay. Give this um, advice every week and nobody can do it, but it's a good North Star to think about when you're preparing for the interview. Answer the question immediately. <laughs> Answer the question immediately and then fill in the back stuff. This okay. is critical. So the question is, how come you went to uh, University of Michigan? What's the immediate answer? I wanted to learn more about how passenger vehicles are engineered. Um, and uh, this this was a passion for You're me. You're missing something. You where, where were you? Did you go directly from uh, RV College to University no. of Michigan? No. That's yeah. the critical thing. Okay. After college, I got a job with Blah, and they had a program that introduced me to the they had connections with the University of Michigan. That's the answer. Okay. Right. Or whatever the true version of that is. Okay. Yeah. Uh, you it's you get the idea that that is answering the question immediately. I do. Yeah. 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 Okay. Now I gotta I gotta stop and ask you this. You've worked for Ford, and you worked for GM. <laughs> what do you want your classmates to know about how those companies are different and how they're the same? Wow, this is they interesting. Gotta ask you this, man, and you need a good answer. All right, uh, this is a great question. Um, as for how they're different, I would say GM is more um, GM. Uh, I mean, at GM, the, the the culture is more centered around uh, promoting diversity at the workplace, and uh, I see a lot of initiatives that go to um, ensure like. Uh, employee well-being um, and at Ford uh, the environment I felt was uh, more centered around work 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 if that makes sense yeah and, it makes sense what you're saying is GM is a compassionate uh, well-managed company and Ford is a bunch of SOBs it, that's an if that's what you want to say that's the answer they'll, they'll uh, up on it. I mean I, I don't want to put in those terms but that's a good you go you know there's, there is a difference. GM is a benign employer and Ford is much tougher. Right. Okay. Uh, this is a, and uh, as far as how they are same, I would say. Uh, yeah, we yeah, they're the same. They both make cars. Yeah. Here's a question. Here, here are terms that I mention every week and they're critical. Business schools look at companies as either being flat or hierarchical. Do you get the difference? I get the difference. Yep. Yeah. So is GM or Ford, which one of those? It sounds like Ford is hierarchical and GM is more flat, or maybe that's not true. Uh, I would say, interestingly, I would say both. I felt both to be hierarchical. Um, okay. that, that makes sense. They're big integrated companies. Sure. What about, what about, your, what about your workplace? What about your work group? Was it flat or hierarchical? These are terms that you have to be familiar with and you have to be able to introduce into the conversation when they talk about corporate culture. <laughs> so for those people watching at home, you go corporate culture, ding, flat or hierarchical? Got it? So what's the answer? Uh, so my current uh, workplace at GM, my group, 
I would say is more, you know, more flat than the overall organization. What I mean by that is uh, my supervisor, uh, he encourages us to be more scrappy and entrepreneurial and come up with like ideas. Yeah, and that's great. Us, right. Uh, he provides us the freedom to, uh, you know, go pursue those ideas and see where they go. So uh, I, uh, does, that, does this answer the question? Yeah, you could answer the question, which is all that's important. And our viewers can figure out what they have to say. <clears throat> okay, so we've covered your schooling. We've covered your job experiences. Uh, well, can, can you give me a, uh, there, there's another lead, there, there's another header called leadership. You have mm -hmm. to be able to answer these questions. Who's the best leader you ever worked for? You absolutely have to be able to answer that question. Absolutely. Uh, so this uh, has to be my uh, former supervisor. Um, uh, so he, uh, I found his leadership style to be uh, like very good because it was hands off, and he gave us a lot of autonomy to uh, to do the design work as we deem fit, and uh, he never stopped short of you know um, like uh, uh, praising us if uh, like for jobs well done, uh, and I thought that made the workplace. A okay, good, he's uh, a good answer. When they ask you the question, "Who's the best leader you ever worked for?" I say this every week. You gotta be able to name the guy. The best leader I ever worked for was Joe Blow. He was the vice president of, uh, you know, hubcaps at, at Ford. And he, I worked for him for two years. And he, here's what made him a great leader, okay? And then you have to go bing, 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 bing. Okay, um, shall I try that again? Uh, sure. Yeah, who's yeah. the best leader you ever worked for? Uh, so uh, this has to be Chad Hoover. He was the supervisor of the product development uh, engineering department at uh, Troy Design, my previous job. Uh, I, I thought I, I think he's a great leader because he was very hands off with his leadership approach, and he gave us a lot of autonomy to pursue our ideas. And uh, he never stopped short of uh, you know praising us for jobs well done, and uh, that uh, you know this this uh, made me. Uh, like really like working at uh, Troy Design. Okay, that's that's an acceptable answer. You, you you should look this up and get the right lingo down, both you and everybody else. Here's a here's a question you have to be able to answer. What what's the best thing he ever said to you? Uh, well, the most the most valuable thing. The, great question. Uh, so he made me mo feel more confident in my own skin. Uh, being an Indian, uh, Troy Design was, was my first uh, full-time job in the U.S. So I was in team presentations. I was experiencing a, a little bit of accent anxiety. And uh, after one such presentation, he sensed that I was uh, like way too nervous. And he said that he said that he thought my communication style was very understandable. And uh, that, uh, you know, provided me confidence and uh, helped me. Good. Uh, okay. Now take my advice about answering the question immediately and answer the question, what's the best thing he ever said to you? Uh, so he uh, he asked me to not uh, like try overly to sound American and he advised me to just uh, like leverage yeah, my- well, you're, you're not, you're, you're still backing into it. You gotta have a headline here. The best thing he ever said to me was, don't worry about being an Indian. We can understand you. We like you, and the company is open to it. So, and your presentation was very, very good, and everybody understood it. Okay. You get you get the difference. Yeah. yeah. Okay. There's a there there's a list of um, you know the internet is full of typical questions business schools are going to ask you. You've got to go through those questions and say, how would Sandy answer that, okay? And you have to internalize that. Oh, makes sense, yeah. Okay, so yep. I, I think you're gonna do a great job. You got a lot going for you. Uh, and uh, we'll finish off with this. This is a, an important question and you should have an answer. Give me, Tell me what you want to do after business school. Tell me what you, where you want to be. What job do you want after business school? What job do you want in 10 years after that? And what, what, what's your final dream position?
everybody should be able to answer that. Um, all right, uh, I'd love to. So my ultimate career aspiration is to lead a global automotive company. Um, so for to in order to get there, after after my after my MBA, I want to work at a. Uh, How many global automobile companies are there? Uh, seven, eight. Yeah. Okay. As- so your your aspiration is one of eight jobs. Well, that's you're shooting high. I'll grant you that. Okay. <laughs> Uh, so after my MBA, okay, here's a t- they might ask you this. Okay, do you know those eight people? Uh, I think I know most of them. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Which I, uh, 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 so of the ones you know, do you think one of them is doing a better job? That was one of them is head and shoulders above the other. Interesting question. Uh, looking at share prices, uh, I you would be tempted to say Elon Musk is doing a great job with Tesla. But I disagree. I think Mary Barra is doing a great job at GM. Uh, she has a stated vision of uh, yeah. GM. You know, Tesla's not really an auto guy. Tesla's just a generalist, don't you think? Well, uh, I, I realize he's the CEO of an auto company now, but all the Tesla itself is kind of an oddball auto company. But but anyway, you should research the people who run those companies, you should research how they got there. You should be able to answer questions about what you would do if you were them and what the challenges are facing those people. Okay, I'm gonna finish off with a question that is popular and very difficult. If you, if you had 10 minutes to speak to the head of uh, General Motors, uh, what would you say? Let me tell you, he's not, he's not interested in you telling him that uh, fossil fuels have a rocky road. What he wants to know is something that you could tell him based on your experience with GM about your group or your type of work. Oh, absolutely. Uh, so I've been with GM for a little over a year now. And uh, for most of this year, I've been busy with uh, projects and programs, uh, but I uh, I have had instances where I where I've gotten a little light on work, and it's not just me. Uh, I I I think it'd be fair to say that uh, most. Of the- hey, I'm the I'm the CEO of G- GM. Hi there. I understand you've you know what, what do you want me what do you what do you want to tell me? Let's hear it. Uh, so I I would say. Wow, this is a tough question. Uh, <laughs> talking to a chief executive. Um, yeah, but he's interested. He, this guy, do you know what the guy is doing? He's he's doing something that people say you should do. You should talk to the rank and file and, and try and find out what's going on in their little world. Right. Uh, I I would say uh, make the organization a little more efficient. That's not helpful. No. Uh, so. Uh, what I want to say is... You don't think... Do you, you think he doesn't know that? <laughs> what I want to say is keep your... I mean, um, uh, keep keep your employees more busy with projects and uh, programs. Is there... Uh, uh, I, I don't know. Is Are they not busy because there's a downturn in the industry? He, he knows that too. So he said, oh, I know how to keep people busy. How many people are in your group? Um, about 40. Well, if if we turned those 40 people into 20 people, wouldn't they be really busy? (laughs) You get it? It's going, yeah. Uh, So what would be a good approach? Not where it's going, it's gone, it's arrived. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, anyway, those are questions to think about. You're you're a likable guy. Uh, Just go through the the standard questions. uh, And... um, you know, and, and, you know, incorporate what we've spoken about here. And that, that advice is true for all you people watching this in the peanut gallery. This has been a very valuable uh, 31 minutes. Okay. Thanks for tagging along with us. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much, Sandy. Okay. Feedback. Shalom, man. Have a good weekend. Yep. Bye-bye. Bye.